Hallelujah. Are you peaceful and joyful and ready to battle? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen? Amen. And we have a choice to rejoice. Praise God. You know, every miserable Christian needs to be right. Home. <laughs> In their closet. Till they get joyful. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. Of course, when there's gathering together, they need to throw their flesh right into this room. Amen. Into the presence of God. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. Glory, glory, glory. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. You know, things are happening rapidly. Things are moving very quickly. And uh, sometimes when things begin to move quickly, I mean, how many of y'all know time is just flying, man? And uh, when things begin to move quickly, we have a tendency to become easily distracted. And... You know, one of the things we don't want to do is become distracted. And, uh, you know, it happens every day in our life where the enemy is trying to bring a distraction in one way or another. Remember, his purpose is to mislead us and to snare us. It says every day that he sets up traps for me and you. So that's why it's vitally important to make what is unseen to become seen. And, and God is training I mean, there's a, that's what discipleship is. It's supposed to be training. It's not just to build physical things. The first thing that must be built is the spiritual. Because what good is it to build a building and put people in it, but not teach them to battle, how to teach them to battle and fight powers of darkness? Amen? So the first thing that must be built is not only your spirit, but your relationship with the Lord and everything that we do. In Ephesians 4, in chapter 11, it says, hey, would you read it with me? And he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. What's the purpose? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? Perfect man. To the measure of the stature of of the fullness of Christ, meaning the anointing. To the fullness of the anointing. The Bible, the only place in the Bible that says that the gates of hell will not prevail is the anointing. Amen? And in that, that's where we talk about the eternal presence, the eternal power, and the eternal truth of God Almighty, carried by the Holy Spirit that lives within us. It says, so that we should no longer be what? Children, immature, Amen. grumblers and complainers, Amen. tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the what? Truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Everyone say, I got to do my share. Yes. Causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So God sets up leadership. He sets up places. In other words, in this, I can't, I can't give you what I don't have. That's why there's many times it says count it all joy while you go through trials and tribulations. Because <sighs> maybe there's something you haven't gone through that you needed to get. Amen. Amen. And remember, your, our trials and tribulations is, is to separate us from our impurities and to expose our enemies. Amen. And to test where we stand, whether God can trust us or not. 
And there's how many all know God wants to promote us every time? Amen. He wants to bring us to another place. So we are being equipped to fulfill destiny. Has everybody got it? And it's not our destiny, it's his. So many times we have a tendency to want to fulfill our own destiny. When God is saying, it's my destiny in you that I'm fulfilling. And that's where people fall into what we call a false destiny. Amen? Amen. Go to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. And the Bible says that the Lord came to bring life and life abundantly. Jeremiah 29. And this is what the Lord says about me and you. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of what? Peace and not evil. It's amazing how many times that the enemy always tries to tell you that God is, is not with you. He's holding something back from you. Amen? That's all he's trying to do is get us in the position to receive. He says, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a what? Future. That is called destiny. And a hope. He says, then you'll call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search me with what? All of your heart. All of your heart. All of your heart. All of your heart. Listen, we want all that he has for me and you, amen? amen. That means we got to give him all that we have. So we see here that there's thoughts of peace and a future and a hope. In other words, there is a specific destiny that he has planned for me and you. But many times the enemy will try and come in and bring a false destiny. And again, I've said this many, many times before. One of the worst things that we can do is be successful in the wrong assignment. In John chapter 10. Hallelujah. You know, the word says something powerful. It says the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. The word of God is true. Amen? Amen. The Bible is a training manual. We are not here at a Bible study. We're here at a training session. Because it's all about a military operation. It's about kingdom business. It's not personal. It's kingdom. Amen? Amen? So in this, we've got to come to a place where we begin to see things more kingdom-wise and more military-wise than religious-wise. In fact, the word religion needs to be erased because this is not a religious operation. Jesus came and he said, Behold, the kingdom of God is upon you. Amen. The power of God, the eternal presence, power and truth of God Almighty, the anointing is upon you. In John 10 and verse 9, he says, I am the what? The door. And if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out or go in and out and find pasture. Again, that does not say pastor. It says pasture. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the, thief do <laughs> the thief does not come except to what? Steal. To what? Kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Again, the enemy comes to promote a false destiny. And, you know, if you don't realize it, if you don't even consider it, if you don't even think it, if you're, even when the Holy Spirit's trying to unction you, man, you're going on the false destiny, you're going on the wrong path, we won't pay any attention to it. And we'll just keep going because even though it's being successful, it's the wrong plan. Hello? First John chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. Today's teaching is called false destiny if you haven't understood that yet. 
First John chapter 5, verse 18. First John chapter 5, verse 18. Can we speak this together? We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself. Keeps himself. And the what? And the wicked one does not touch him. So if you are, if you are keeping yourself clean, if you are keeping yourself in position, if you are keeping yourself contact, if you are keeping yourself in relationship, if the Lord is always before you in everything you do, then you're keeping yourself, and the devil cannot touch you. Amen? Of course, he likes to make paper airplanes. Amen? And he throws them at you, and people pick them up and read them. And then they agree with what they just read or what they just heard. Well, then he's just got access again. It says that in verse 19, we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the what? Sway of the wicked one. So does the whole world lie under the... Deception of Satan's kingdom. Yes. Everything is. Behind every area, there's Satan's hand in something. Behind education. Behind the medical field. Behind the government. Amen. Behind everything. His hand is somewhere in there because he is the manipulator and the deceiver. So he tries to put truth. He allows truth to go first sometimes. And it slides in with deception. Promoting a false destiny. Is everybody okay? Let's go a little further. Verse 19. We know that we are, uh, uh, verse 20. We have what? We know that the Son of God has come and given us a understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from what? Idols. So what he was, he's warning us. He's saying, look it. If you allow an idol in your life, it's going to set you on the wrong destiny. Has everybody got it? Idols will bring a person into the wrong destiny. Listen, a destiny can be set by so many things. It could be set by man. Amen. It could be set by Money, it could be set by materialism, it could be set by fame, it could be set by inheritance, it could be set by tradition, or it could be set by God. And there's only one that sets the true destiny, and that's the creator that created me and you. Everything else will bring a false destiny. Does everybody get it? Yeah. Hallelujah. So we see here that there's something... Um, to where we've got to be careful because how many all know lust is an idol? Amen. Born of God has no fellowship with the presence of deception. If you are born of God, you never approve deception. You never promote deception. Amen. But you expose it. That's kingdom business. The Bible tells us that. Have no fellowship with the works of darkness. See, where there's deception, there's the presence of darkness. Does everybody understand? How many of y'all know rebellion is deception? It's the presence of darkness. That's what it promotes. Why? Because this is called evil. It's called wicked. It's called demons. It's called lies. And it's called lust. That's what deception is released from, those things. It promotes desires and forms of godliness, but no power over deception. See, the understanding that he says that he wants us to have, that we have this understanding. He's given us an understanding, amen, of deception's influence. And that can only be done in relationship by the Spirit of the living God. The Word says that the Spirit of God exposes all things. He guides us into all truth. Amen? Amen? All truth. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Spirit of God every day so that we can expose the influences of deception. Because of what is it going to do? It's going to promote what? False destiny. And everything that we do. 
You know, God is a loving God. He's merciful. Even when a person is on a false destiny, he still loves us. Amen? It doesn't mean a person's going to hell, does it? No. But don't you want the fullness that God has for me and you? Amen. Amen. In Psalm 38. The word also tells us to examine ourselves, whether we're walking in the faith. Faith is not blind. <laughs> People say, well, I'm stepping out in faith, and they don't even know what the heck they're stepping out in. That's not faith. If God tells you, then you do it, but you better make sure it's God tells you to do it. Faith is spiritual sight, so that you can see spiritually. So when God tells you, you hear, and then you do. Amen? It's, look at Abraham. God told him. He obeyed. It was counted to him as faith and righteousness. Because true faith will always produce righteousness. And Psalm 38, verse 9. Let's speak it together. All, Lord, all my what? Desire is before you. And my sign is not hidden from you. My heart pants. My strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My loved ones and my friends stand aloft from my plague, and my relatives stand afar off. Those also who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of what? Destruction. A plan and plan what? Deception when? All the day long. The enemy all day is trying to get you off course. Amen. Verse 13. But I, like a deaf man, don't hear. And I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus, I am like a man who does not hear and whose mouth is no response. For in you, O Lord, I hope. You will hear, O Lord, my God. For I said, hear me, lest they rejoice over me. Lest my foot slips, they exalt themselves against me. Deception has brought blindness, deafness, mute, where a person is bound by fear. It causes an individual to begin to drift in wrong direction, to fulfill a false destiny. Does everybody get it? But our hope is in him no matter what. How many of you know God can put you on course at any time? Just takes some repentance, doesn't it? It takes some humbleness. It takes a willing to make a change. See, he'll never interfere with your will. That's why we got to always give our will. See, many times the enemy will like to put your will in prison and manipulate. Because things are going so well. How many know when things are going so well, you better be really, really sensitive <laughs> it's amazing how sensitive we get when things are going bad but man when they're oh lord what's going on but when things are going good yeah thanks man Whoop. and don't even see the trap when things are going well is when the devil comes why he set you on a false destiny because things are going so well <laughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a message from the Eternal Broadcasting Company. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9. <laughs> Would you read it with me? It says, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous what? Deception. Among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be what? that they might be saved. 
So again, there is this area where it's called unrighteous deception. It produces decay in body and mind. Amen. You know, when people reject counsel, they're rejecting correction, aren't they? When uh, this is an area where the enemy comes in and, and, and he promotes by emotion desire. I mean, even Jesus warned him and says, man, your, your affections are what cause you to stumble. See, everything that comes to us, we must check motive. Everything has motive behind it. If you're truly examining yourself, you'll always check motive. And when you check motive, Jesus is standing right in front of you. Hi. Check the motive. Because what you can't see, he'll show you. You know, it's amazing how many people go, well, the Lord knows my heart. The problem is the person really doesn't. Because deception has them thinking their heart's okay. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> So again, when, when we reject counsel or correction, direction, what it does is it, it puts us then on a false destiny path instead of a true destiny path. Amen? Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. Just think, if everybody was on the right destiny, how much more advanced the kingdom of God would be? More unified. Second Peter chapter two. I think we're having a check from heaven today. Verse twelve, please. Let's read it together. It says, But these like natural brute beasts make to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand, and will utterly perish in their own discretion corruption and will receive the wages of righteous unrighteousness at those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime there are spots and blemishes carousing in their own what deception you know they're uh, look at evil walks in deception amen it says there are, there are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deception while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery is adultery an idol Yes. And they cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are what? Accursed children. In other words, they walk in their own deception. They have eyes of lust, secretly associating with sin and entice others to join them. Amen? In other words, it falls into an area. Look, how many of y'all know that God would rather have someone who's willing to please him than please man? Amen? Amen. And it can, people can fall into an area where they become men-pleasers instead of God-pleasers. They're looking out more for self instead of kingdom business. And when that begins to occur, a person will slip right into false destiny. In 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Lust is a considered an overwhelming desire. It's an overwhelming desire. In fact, the Lord warns us about overwhelming desires because they have a tendency to push us, manipulate us. Amen? And obviously deceive us. Lust is an idol. And 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. Uh, yeah, 1 John. Let's speak it together. Verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is what? It is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. In other words, these idols are going to eventually go. But they're still here. But he who does the will of God does what? He abides forever. He talks about the pride of life. The pride of life is a life in itself. Pride has a life in itself. 
it supports, it's supported by lust. Amen? Lust, again, is an overwhelming desire to fulfill self, releasing a false destiny. Because if you're li living to fulfill yourself, you will release a false destiny. Is everybody okay? Lust is addiction, isn't it? Amen. As an addict will lie, betray, deceive, manipulate. They're willing to lose families. They're willing to go to prison. Amen? And some believe in certain areas that they're doing where there's great deception, they're doing the will of God. They believe it's okay. What happens is they begin to abuse liberty and not even know it. See, because they fall into a, a place where they, I'm a good person. One of the things we don't want to do is grieve the Holy Spirit. And we grieve the Holy Spirit by abusing freedom. Amen? By abusing that freedom. One of the things God always sets us up in an area where he unfolds his will and he allows it. He says he establishes our steps. Well, he's not going to establish your step unless you acknowledge him. And when you acknowledge him, you're acknowledging him first, not about what you're doing, but to examine you. Does everybody get it? Our first thing is to, to be clean, to be pure, so that relationship maintains. The cleaner you are, the closer he is. Amen. Is everybody okay? Amen. Go to Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel 14. So there's multiple ways of deception that the enemy likes to contaminate us. Amen? Amen. He likes to put, set us up with idols. How many of y'all know that a talent can become an idol? Amen. Ezekiel 14. Is everybody there? Cool. And verse 4. So what about when we approve of something that's not right? Does it contaminate? Amen. Yes. In fact, the Lord warns us of those things, doesn't he? In verse 4, would you read it with me? Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Every one of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity and then comes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols. That I may what? Seize the house of Israel by their heart because they are all astray from me by their idols. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, repent, turn away from your idols, and turn your faces away from all your abominations. For any one of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who separates himself from me and sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity, then comes to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So again, we've got to be very careful about setting idols up. Why? Because it's going to produce a false destiny. So everybody get this. Very, very powerful. And how can that be influenced? It's influenced by lust, uh, overwhelming desire. Destinies can be set by multiple things. One of the things we got to constantly do is sometimes stop, step back, let the Lord examine us, determine our motives of everything that we're doing, and make sure that we have confirmation. Amen? Wait a minute. The Lord just said in the, in the scriptures of Ephesians 4 that he set people over us. For what? Confirmation. To establish us. So that we can be set in the correct destiny. 
Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Let's go to Colossians 2. Glory. It's a new season. It's a new day. True destiny's on its way. Colossians chapter 2, is everybody there? Amen. Good. I need a voice activated Bible. <laughs> Colossians 2. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> In verse 4. Let's speak it together. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order. That's called divine order. And the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men. You know how many times you say, well, this is what I believe. Of course, you get a lot of people and say, this is what God said, and they God, well, it's not what God said anyways. According to the basic what? principles of the world and not according to what the anointing not according to the anointing not according to the anointing known as the holy spirit for in him read it with me dwells all the fullness of the godhead bodily and you are what complete in him who is the head of all principality and darkness so one of the things god desires is divine order so it sets true destiny amen acts 13 and what is the price to freedom and true destiny cooperation no cooperation no freedom hallelujah Verse 2, Acts 13, verse 2. Let's speak it together. And it says, And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, then they what? Sent them away. They sent them out. They're sending them out recovering. Let me tell you something. One of the things that you can be sure of in every area is when you are sent, destiny is set. When you're not sent, destiny is not set. Has everybody got it? That's why it's so important to be sent. Is everybody okay? In verse 4, so being set, sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seculia. And from there they sailed to Cyprus. Again, being what? Sent. Help set destiny. Is everybody okay? Galatians 4. So we want to do things in divine order. How many of you the devil comes to promote anxiousness? Let me ask you this. Anxiousness is an overwhelming desire, isn't it? So it's associated with lust. See, people just associate lust with some, some perversive, perver perversive thing, but it's not. Anxiousness is lust. Galatians 4, verse 1. Is everybody not there? No. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, loosen up. No, it's all right. 
Let's speak it. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, when we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to what? Redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out what? Abba, Father. That means daddy. See, that's relationship. When you are in a place where he's not just God anymore, he's dead. Therefore, verse 7, you are no longer a slave but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed when you did not know God, you served those which by nature were not God's. But now after you've known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly, beggarly elements to which you desire again to be what? In bondage. Well, let me share with you. They got off course. Amen? They got off course. So in other words, when they're off course, destiny cannot be fulfilled. Does everybody understand it? But he's saying, look, get back under guardians so that you can be what? Sent. Is everybody okay? Look at Everybody knows that we get sent by Jesus. Amen? So there's a spiritual sending, but there's also a physical sending. And when the two unite, de destiny is set. Acts 17. Acts 17. I want to remind you to make sure you go vote. Amen? Everybody know what the next feast to be fulfilled is? The Feast of Trumpets. Just want to remind you of Trumpets Feast. <laughs> it's the Feast of what? Trumpets. Praise God. That means the removal of the church, right? Praise God. Oh, yes. Let's speak it together. Nor is he worshipped with what? Men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries. How many of you know God sets boundaries in your life? Of their own. Dwelling so that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from us, each and every one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, we are also his offspring. So understand that, okay, so there's a divine order, amen, there's guardians, and then there's boundaries. God always sets. I can tell you that the Holy Spirit sets up boundaries. And these boundaries are flexible as the Lord arranges them. So when we begin to get close to these boundaries, there should be a sense of wrong. Beep, 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 beep. You know, you can sense things not right. And those boundaries are to assist us into true destiny so that we don't fall into false destiny. So after we become born again, I can tell you that the boundaries are sometimes. And as you begin to learn the trust of the Lord, they begin to become flexible. So one day, you earn his trust and the boundaries are removed. And then you might feel a slap in the back of the head or a kick in the butt, you know. Come on, get over there. But in that, boundaries are set for our purpose. In fact, there may be times when the Holy Spirit will say to you, why haven't you set that boundary? 
Because there's times when God will send, set them, but then there's times he says, you set them. Because when he asks you to set that boundary, he's bringing you and I into a test to see if we're like-minded. How many of you know you can trust somebody that's like-minded? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2 again, verse 18. Colossians 2.18. Let's speak it together, please. Let no one what? Cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, you subject yourselves to what? regulations. Let me share something with you. It doesn't mean you're going to go around running stop signs and running red lights. Amen? Because you're going to get in trouble. But what it is, is in other words, there are regulations and things that are set that the world approves of that you and I are not to. Abortion is one. Drinking is another. Smoking. Things that harm the body. Amen? Porn pornography and things that it, those are things that the world approves of which is associated and promotes lust including rebellion selfish ambitions and all those other things that are not approved by God that's why it says seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness well how are you going to know his righteousness if you're not willing to stand before him and allow him to examine your motives what is your motive am I really on the true destiny, or am I in a false destiny? What's my end result? That's why it's important that we get eyes to see all the way through and ears to hear all the way through. Amen? That's why it's important to pray every morning, get on the full armor of God. Amen? And get into his presence and make contact. It's important. See, not holding to the head of Christ. He is the ruling government. It's about kingdom business. And when we're not really doing it, you know, and I've shared this before, that there's many people who are still only holding on with one hand. The other hand, they're still holding on to all of their stuff. They're holding on to their idols. Amen? They're holding on to their idols, their lusts. Willing to do whatever it takes, even betray, lie. Why? Because when that person holds on to that long enough, they become an addict. The same characteristics as an addict is the same characteristics of holding on to that lust. Amen? Look at everybody has good ideas, but are they God's ideas? There's a lot of good deals, but are they God deals? <laughs> one is going to promote and set that destiny, and another one's going to cause us a drift. And I want to close at 1 Peter chapter 4. And don't associate with people that are giving wrong counsel. <laughs> Associations bring what? Impartations. Verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 4. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Cool. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin or associating with sin or allowing sin to have dominion over you. Is deception sin? Yes. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. 
in regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation. Speaking evil of you. They will give, let me tell you, people will misunderstand you when you're truly about kingdom business. And then the devil comes in and gives them worse first. Oh, they hate us. Oh, they're this. Oh, they're this. Hello. When you're truly not about kingdom business, because kingdom business is not personal business, it's about the kingdom. And then in that arena, when people don't understand you, because if you're a person that's sold out to kingdom business, you're going to speak truth, whether somebody's offended or not. Amen. Too bad. Repent and get it right. It's not personal. Does everybody get it? It's never personal. It's kingdom. And if you're not willing to receive counsel, correction, and direction, then you can't be about kingdom business. If you grumble and complain every time you're corrected, you can never get on the right destiny. Won't work. I will always mislead you. You will always fall into an area not willing to let go of the idols of lust and selfish desires, selfish ambitions, my way. You know, Jesus has a wonderful saying of, Yahweh or the highway, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Does everybody get this? I'm telling you, it is vitally important because many people are about to make decisions that are leading to false destiny. Or they already made them already. Thinking that God don't know. Hallelujah. Okay. Where are we at? <laughs> Do we start this yet? <laughs> Do we need to start this whole teaching over? <laughs> In verse 4, let's speak it. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of, oh, we read this already, dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is what? Ready to judge the living and the dead. How many old God is before us all the time? So is he judging us all the time? Yes. It doesn't mean that the judgment has been released. Amen. And that's where many people are deceived because judgment hasn't been released. But he's judging. Amen. But one day when it gets released, they will, well, I don't get it. Oh, you didn't get it then either. Hello? Verse 6. For this reason... The gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Hello. Therefore, be what? Serious. Serious and watchful in your prayers. Serious. L listen, serious in prayer and watchful means you're, wait, you're looking for the Lord to expose you. Amen. Expose me. Show me. How many of y'all know the devil can bring you a false vision? Amen. Such on the wrong course and destiny. If you're not willing to ex be exposed first, you can't get the right thing. You won't even discern it. Amen. Is everybody okay? Yeah. In verse 8. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for the love will cover a multitude of sins. But be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as of the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability with God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. And everybody said amen. 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 Praise be to God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I apply the blood of Jesus on the seed so that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory. And we ask that you please continue to search us through. 
Remove those things that offend you, cause us to stumble, and bring your light and truth into every area of our life that we may be set on your destiny and not our own. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen.